you want to pursue your passion, the first thing you need to do is pursue excellence. It's by being really good at something, you get a seat at the table um, wherever you want. When students ask me how to get in, into this business, my first response is to be very, very good at something else. Because every one of these firms needs accountants, needs HR people, needs marketing people. Um, if you want to get into the, I got into the business as a lawyer. So be really good at something, because a lot of people want to be in the media and entertainment business. And so to compete, just be really good, because that demonstrates <clears throat> what kind of person you are. The best piece of advice I ever got, a little bit, I wish it was a little bit earlier, so I, I give it now all the time, was from my mom. And it was never be afraid to ask, because the absolute worst that can happen is they say no. And that's actually not so bad. And so now I take that advice literally into everything I do. I ask for everything, and it is amazing what you get when you ask, um, to the point that I just got a free coffee this morning, because <laughs> it was cold. Um, and uh, I would say, I would say and, and you can take that into your kind of professional world, because oftentimes you sit in meetings, and so, you know, people are afraid to ask, because they don't want to sound dumb, or they, you know, they don't want to sound um, out of place. Just ask, because the, the majority of the time, there's other people in the room that are thinking the same thing, um, and you only learn and get knowledge if you ask, so just do not be afraid to ask. So if you want to be a writer, then spend a lot of time writing. If you want to be a performer, spend a lot of time performing. If you want to, and so that was, that was what guided me in the beginning was just like, I know that I want to, I love doing comedy, so I'll keep, I had a job at a cafe and I was in grad school and I had a job teaching uh, music at a summer camp and I just had all these piecemeal things that helped me live while I was pursuing what I knew I wanted to do and so if you have a thing that you know you want to do, like do that thing, create the art that, you, that moves you, that you speak and speaks to you, and then eventually there will be people, managers, agents, and, uh, and industry people who are like, I like you, and then it won't be a fake version of yourself that you've just constructed because you think it's the way that you want to, like, it's great, it, that's, that's what'll lead to eventually, I mean, if not, monetary, numerical, success, like better to fail on your own terms than succeed unhappily on somebody else's. Think of your difference as your competitive advantage somewhere. Where can you add the most value? If you're from another country and are fluent in both languages, which businesses can take advantage of that? Last spring a senior came to see me. She didn't have a job uh, at the point in time that she came to see me and she was getting nervous, so she wanted some career advice. And I looked at her resume and it was excellent. She'd done all the right things, and so it was really a matter more of persistence. But I, I asked her to tell me something about herself that was not on her resume. And the first thing she told me was that she was a black belt in karate. And I said, well, why isn't that on your resume? That tells me you're persistent, that you pursue things to a level of excellence, that you're strong and a willful doer. That's the kind of person I want working for me, and that's the kind of person most people want working for them. That's, more information about you than what your major was or anything else on your resume. I'll get a hundred resumes. Half of them are from the child of a, you know, board member. There's so much of that kind of stuff. You need to stick out. You need to be enthusiastic. Um, the kiss of death is somebody who comes in who hasn't done their research. You should know, if you're coming in and you're applying for a job at Food Network, I want you to know who all the talent are. I want you to know the schedule. I want you to know a little bit about me. I want you to know a little bit about my head of programming, my head of marketing. You should come in having done your homework. And if you don't, that just says to me, I wouldn't even give you the time of day, nor would I pass you on to somebody else. Because one of the most important things about any job interview is if you're impressive, it might not be a fit for that particular job, but I might have a friend at NBC who I know is looking for somebody, or I might there might be a different department. So don't forget that any job interview you go to or any informational interview that you go to, it's not just about that day, it's about the next year. Whatever you do, if you don't send a thank you email afterwards, I don't care who you are, I am writing you off. Um, and that sounds nasty, I know, but it is so important partly because it says to me, well, they didn't really care. Or they think they have this in the bag. Um, send me a note, thank me for my time, ask a couple of questions so that I have a reason to go back to you, and by all means, attach your resume, because then what I can do is I can start passing that around to friends.
So just take those interviews really, really seriously. It is so important. First impressions are everything. It's one thing to look for a place to work. It's another thing to t accept a job where you get red flags on the way in and hear things that make you kind of certain that it might not be the place for you. So getting a job is nice. Going to work somewhere where they ask you to subjugate who you are in order to work there is not a great decision. You will burn out. It is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Thing number one. Thing number two is, for all this talk about how bad cisgendered white dudes are, they also still hold a lot of the keys to a lot of the power in this world. So look for allies where you can find them. Um, because no progress is made if we don't cooperate. So it is important to reach out to those around you and make sure that you are creating those bridges for all of us as you go along. Not every guy who is a cisgendered old white dude like myself is awful, um, but we need to call them out when they are as well. Um, so allies are really important all around you. It, it, you've heard that over and over again. Make friends, build bridges, build networks. These are lessons that we can take with us everywhere we go. You just really have to encourage those around you to be interested in finding facts and truth. You have to explore a lot of different outlets and sources and stories and ideas. Don't become someone who only relies on one side. Obviously, if you're a CNN lover, you should be turning on Fox every once in a while to see what they're talking about and vice versa. Um, I think it's really important, like I said earlier, to find comfort in the discomfort of being challenged. And that might sound cheesy or scary, but I promise you it will make you all better off. Being um, a thoughtful citizen of the world now takes, takes work. It takes effort. Um, and if you don't do the effort, somebody else is doing it for you because they're feeding it to you, whether it's because they are following uh, uh, algorithms or they're following a business model that doesn't have your actual self-interest uh, at heart or you're following something that a politician is telling you um, and the two things you need to do are one is work on critical thinking the way you would work on you know whatever your hobby is playing the violin your basketball game um, critical thinking is something that needs to be maintained and sharpened it doesn't you don't just get it in you know 11th grade in high school and then it sticks and then also as Alexi was saying so does what you where you get your news from both national versus local left versus right small, tiny little appetizer type pieces, and then long reads that require some diligence and discipline um, because that's good for personal hygiene, but it's also going to spread out in your human connections with other people. And if everybody does enough of that, then, because by the way, it's all on us to, to fix this problem in a, in a sense, um, if everybody does that, then it creates at least pockets of more um, reasonable and informed citizens than those who are just being led by the nose by other forces. Data science is going to be probably the most hot part of the media entertainment industry for the next probably at least decade, probably beyond that, because all these new platforms need data scientists to determine how best to capture audiences, but it's also a great way to understand how to make content. The idea that you can actually determine what type of content to make by paying attention to the data science is how you can look at how the universe changes around data even if you're not in the data department, if you're in the programming department. Second thing I would jump on that Lily said is my last six jobs were all created for me. So the idea that you have to go apply for a job, obviously entry level you're probably looking for a job that already exists and just opened, but from that point on, Look for where the growth is. Look for where the money is moving. And those are where the opportunities will lie best for you. Stay flexible. Oh, yeah. Be <laughs> adaptable. And again, be nice to everybody because as you're going through that change, a lot of people get promotions not because they're good, but because they know somebody. So <laughs> definitely, I have to stay. I, I stay on the be kind side of things. And then also, you need to stay up on top of your skills and just be open. Keep your mind open to think about here's a, someone's asking you to do something. Be a problem solver and be able to, if they come to you with a question and say, hey, we'd like to do a change of something in your organization, don't look at the negative first. Digest the question. Think about it. And even if you have to tell them, look, let me go back and think about it and come back and give you, you know, a proper answer. Don't start low with, uh, or, you know, I get a lot of the, uh, <laughs> the exusion of air is what I get. <laughs> and no, just, you know, just take it in, you know, keep a clear mind and always be a problem solver. You want to be seen as someone who is there 
to help with anything, right? You know, um, it could be a small task, it could be a big task. I mean, you know, even in my role now, there are some small tasks that I just will take on myself because, you know, they need to get done. Um, and I think, you know, you want to be seen in an organization and by other, you know, leaders and by other colleagues as solutions oriented. We talk about that a lot in our organization. You know, not only a problem solver, but, um, you know, don't just solve the problem, come up with like a better way for us to do this and be excited about it and get everybody's buy-in. And that type of behavior is invaluable in any company. Um, you know, that's the type of person that every company is out there looking to hire. Use everything you've done to demonstrate you're the kind of person that people want on their team and keep being that person and doors will continuously open for you.